So we are on our front porch. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Cheyenne. This is Kevin. <laughs> and uh, Baylor is here with us, and Elise is here with us. I just colored Elise's hair like fire red, and it's awesome. Michaela is here. Uh, Elijah and Shiloh will probably be in and out of the picture. So here's what we're thinking. It's a windy day. Our neighbors are mowing their lawn. So we thought, since we're all here and it's very spontaneous and actually unplanned by us, that we would, the girls can either ask questions or bring up some, some things that they've learned since we've been here as a church. And we can just sort of expand or expound or whatever you'd want to say. <laughs> Bible flip! <laughs> no one knows where they're... Can we talk about this, though? Just like the wind. It flipped back and forth and landed right back where it was. Yes. Faith brings righteousness, Galatians 3. <laughs> I was just saying that last night we gathered on the lawn in our yard and all I could hear the Spirit was saying was tell them not to be silly and me to not be silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. And I was like, somebody said, why are you saying that? I was like, I have no idea. I just keep hearing don't be silly. And I was addressing all women. And I was like, look up the definition for silly. In fact, if you will, then we can read it again. But, but I was like, we don't want to be like the foolish virgins. And foolish is one of the words for silly. Okay? And this is, after that mighty wind, it's what I opened to when I came out here. And then the wind, y'all saw the wind go whoop, whoop, right back to Galatians 3. Oh, you foolish. Oh, you silly. Jesus. This is a word from the Lord. Well, here we go. Here's the definition for silly. Having or showing a lack of common sense or judgment. Absurd and foolish. Oh, you foolish. Are now we rouse, we could say silly. Thoughtless. And superficial. Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Right before your very eyes. And I'm thinking, yesterday we read in Jude, it said people have come in almost to like the side door. So if we think they got bewitched but we couldn't, I mean, we probably go to church with witches. We are talking about that this morning. (laughs) You never know when someone... We have talked to people who totally do witchcraft. And they don't call themselves witch. Okay? But, like, it's so common. How do we think we might not get bewitched into believing some other thing? And one, one thing that came up last night is I've been having us... I've been encouraging all of us to decide before we go to sleep what we're going to eat in the morning, what we're going to drink in the spirit. And one thing that really came alive for me last night are the five wise virgins. They went to sleep, but they were ready for his coming. They didn't know that was night he was coming. The foolish ones didn't either. If they'd known, they'd have gotten ready. Oh! If If they had known... Even the foolish ones would have gotten ready. But the wise ones went to bed ready. They went to bed with enough oil. I want to just like dance and speak in tongues and shout right off the porch. Like, we need to wake up and be ready. I heard Derek Prince say recently, when he comes, no one will have time to get ready. So we don't need to say we're getting ready. We need to be ready. So anything, and I'm going to say it right to you. I'm saying it right to me. I'm saying it right to these girls. 
anything in your life that would prevent you, that would prevent me, that would prevent us from being ready for the return of Jesus Christ needs to be dealt with before you go to sleep. Because we don't know when he will return. And he is coming back for a bride who has made herself ready. Don't be silly. He could come tonight. And we don't know. You could say, well, I don't think the rapture is good. Well, number one, you're not God, okay? And they asked Jesus when it would be, and he said, the Father knows. So you're not God, all right? You don't know when he's coming back. He's always said he's coming soon. And one day, it will be the day that he has spoken of. But we don't know our next breath. We don't know that we're going to make it to tomorrow. So some of us, somebody here among us will meet the Lord sooner than the others. Wow. I want to be ready. And we saw reading Second Thessalonians last night that the apostles were so proud of the church. They were giving thanks to the church, giving thanks to God for the church. And what they were thanking him for was their faith. And they could see their faith. It's very interesting to me that they were not saying, oh, we see your faith growing because you've won so many souls. They were not saying, we we see your faith because you're doing mighty miracles. They were saying, we see your faith through your unselfish love for one another. And they were talking about how, how that will be addressed and rewarded when Christ, the day he returns, justice will be served. The day he returns, that will be the day of justice. And just thinking about what the apostles, who personally knew the Lord, you know, several of them did, Peter, James, John, what they thought was important for getting the church ready for his return. Just read, you know, just read through the epistles and see what was considered important. It wasn't developing massive ministries it wasn't learning how to do miracles it wasn't being the next great missionary evangelist it was knowing God and, and being growing in sanctification and love for one another I don't want to be silly and focus on the wrong thing I want to be focused on God and I want his life growing in me through my faith in him Oh, don't be silly. So I'm, I'm just thinking with the Lord leading us this way, that silliness opens us up for deception, for bewitching, for sidetrack. Casual. <laughs> Casual, casual, easily influenced. I would say to be easily influenced is to be silly. Paul talks about the people really susceptible to false teaching were silly women, unstable. And I told the girls last night, don't wait on a husband to make you stable because they won't. (laughs) <laughs> right? It's it's building our life on Christ. That's our st- He's our stability. And we need to be much more, I believe, as a church, as a person. Let me say, as Cheyenne, I need to be much more disciplined, serious, focused. Jesus is coming soon, and I don't know when I'm going to meet him whether in the rapture or through death to this temporary life. I feel very sobered. One thing that I've, I've uh, really, you know, we don't have like 
necessarily designated leaders in our church. In fact, we hardly think of ourselves as leaders, only true followers of Christ. And we say, follow us as we follow Christ, as Paul said. So we don't think of ourselves as much as leaders, as true followers. But because people follow you, you're a leader, a leader to those who follow you. And one of my biggest warnings to anybody in our church who starts being perceived as a leader, you know, is don't be led by the ones you're called to lead. I would say that's one of the strongest warnings that I feel to give today. And I have to come out of that mindset because I love, I love people. And so people who are close to me, I can, without realizing it, start being influenced because I love them so much. And so, but God spoke to Jeremiah, I believe it was, and said, you must influence them. Do not let them influence you. Or I'll make you look foolish in front of them. I think that's what he said. I'm just going from memory. You know, we've talked about this. I did a whole sermon on it one time about the problem with trying to be an influencer. Now, I'm not talking about influencing people because it's cool now. Gather material and try to influence people. I'm talking about in the name of Jesus, when the Holy Ghost fire is on you and the Word is in you, influencing them with what God has put in you. Otherwise, you're not really an influencer. You are more under the influence of those you are wanting to influence. If you want to be an influencer, <laughs> Jeremiah didn't. Moses didn't. Paul didn't. I didn't. I'm not saying I'm like that. I hope I'm like them. I hope I am. I'm not saying I am. I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. But these people didn't want to be influencers. When you want to be an influencer, you're more than likely more influenced by who you're trying to influence. I'm reading under the influence that I typed out right now so I can... <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. The sermon was called Under the Influence. Whose influence are you under? Most people who are trying to be influencers are only under the influence of the ones they want to influence because they want to look cool. They want to be accepted. This is the, this is the problem with many pastors. Many churches are under the spell of the unbeliever, the first-time visitor, the cool new convert, the um, popular worship leader. No, thank you. I want to stay under the influence of the Holy Ghost. So I have to stay out from under the influence of people around me. Look at Jesus. Jesus said to Peter, when Peter said, oh, he tried to talk him out of dying. Peter would be in hell if he talked Jesus out of dying. <laughs> How could he be saved? But he didn't have the revelation. And yes, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. And one of the versions of the Bible says, you are a dangerous trap to me because you're seeing things merely from a human point of view. So when people that we've been called to lead are seeing things from a human point of view, if Peter was a dangerous trap for Jesus, they're a dangerous trap for me. And I have to be so under the influence of the Holy Spirit that I'm not bewitched. daily. I have to not be influenced by my children. My oh. boys. Our baby boys. <laughs> it's it's a big deal. Yeah, please do. You want the microphone? Yeah. Do it. This, this is uh, a sermon that I scribed out like a while ago. I don't know the date, but this is just a little section of this exact topic. The only reason this is Cheyenne, the Holy Ghost through Cheyenne. The only reason that I would have been thinking, how could we influence this person, must mean that in some way I am influenced by that person. I'm going to say the people you most want to influence, it is because you are still under their influence. That's the truth right there. And when you are under someone's influence and you are trying to influence them and gain their approval, you will be tempted with a compromise. 
and it will break the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? Can you see it? Can you see it in your life? Maybe it's a friend group, maybe social media, maybe in-laws, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend. I have been more influenced by my children, probably in ways to compromise than any other person in years because I so want to influence them. And it would bring me out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. Um, and then the Lord confirmed it with my husband coming out and reading Acts 13 on the porch with Roland Baker's Post. This is all that same day. Um, and then, uh, let's see. I mean, I want to, you said, I mean, I want to stay under the influence. I want to preach under the influence. I want to love my husband under the influence. I want to love my kids under the influence of the Holy Ghost. I'm not joking. <laughs> I want to sing under the influence. <laughs> Of the Holy Ghost no. is under the influence of the Holy Ghost, and, and realize. See, this is where Smith Booksworth lived. He wouldn't get out of the bed till he was under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Uh. Going to bed under the influence doesn't mean you wake up and oh, akira bo shalaba sanda bo kiamayai. We need to live. We need to live. Interpretation. Here's interpretation. We need to live under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Paul shows us, I read Romans 8 with our kids today, and maybe I'll read it now, or maybe I'll read it at the live today. If we are not being led by the Spirit, we are walking into death. Because if you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you are led by your flesh, and being led by the flesh leads to death. So what about if you're led by the flesh around you? Do you know how many people can preach my sermons better than me, but they're not living them yet? They can take my, they can take what, what they have learned through me, through the Holy Spirit speaking through me, preach them better than me, as in remember it and assimilate it and all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean they're living in the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that took me a long time to learn because I just thought when people came in and got delivered, now we were on the same ground. Let's move forward together. Oh boy, did I have a lot to learn. They were still babies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I had a whole lot to learn. There was something I wanted to say when you were talking about the under the... Oh, one thing that Kevin and I have really seen this week is that one of the biggest traps for me, so probably for a lot of people, the way that, the way that I can more easily get distracted or kind of caught in the mud is picking up responsibility for someone. So that goes along with the wanting to influence. I wanted to influence my children because I felt so responsible. But then the Lord started teaching me, surrender them to me, win them to me for my sake. Suddenly I was no longer under their spell. I didn't want to help them so much that I was soul tied to them in a way. Because what was happening was the opposite. They, were, I was compromising because I care so much about them receiving the message, which is what we've seen in churches all over America. We want people to come to our church. We want them to be saved. They don't like this. Stop it. They, they love this. Do it more. We want to stay where you love this. We want to do it more, Holy Spirit. You hate this. We'll stop it. Because the spirit opposes the flesh and the flesh opposes the spirit. So when you have new people coming to your church, if you're letting what they want run your church, you're a flesh-led church. You've, you've been bewitched. If you let the unbelievers, the first, even the babies, even the baby new Christians, if the Galatians could be bewitched, how can you tell me that your new converts can't be bewitched or be bewitching you? Leaders, I'm talking to leaders now. If you are not being led by the Holy Spirit, confirmed by the Word of God, you have decided to, to finish in the arm of the flesh what was started by the Spirit. I'm not even saying you didn't start right. Guess what? We did too. But I want to finish well. Oh, I want to finish this race. Guess who else did? Paul. And he didn't, he didn't say that it was just a done deal. By faith he was saved, but we're saved. We're being saved. We will be saved. If we already had something, why do we hope for it, the Bible says. And he's not going to go, well done, thou superstar, super famous, super popular, awesome, uh, demon, butt-kicking, um, 
church building, soul winning, apostolic, awesome, whatever. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You stayed full of faith in me. The Bible is very clear. You can look in Zechariah, you can look in Revelations. The one he's coming back for, the weak and the humble ones. Not the arrogant, proud, mighty ones. Praise the Lord. So if you, just because the Lord gave you a vision, you know it was the Lord. I'm talking to pastors right now. The Lord gave you a vision and you are being obedient to his call. But if somehow your congregation has started influencing you or your friends, your pastor friends, or the last conference you went to, you may very well have picked up an armful of flesh. Drop it. Before it's too late, drop it. You don't want to be leading a church under the spell of, of the congregation. We need to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to me, you know. Paul said, I fear lest I, after having preached to others, become a castaway. How could we say that could happen to Paul, but not us? That keeps us in fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says the early church lived in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and this is how they grew. That's a, that's a church growth curriculum right there. Live in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. We're going to paint on our wall this week. I went on the back wall. The only church growth I care about is fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They're the same. You can't separate them. The, fear, the true fear of the Lord will bring the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And if you're just being comforted by the Holy Spirit, you have no fear of the Lord, you're bewitched. If you think you're being comforted by the Holy Spirit and you have no fear of the Lord, you haven't even begun to be wise. You are foolish. You are silly. And the Word will show you this. If you read the Word and believe the Word of God. But, well... <laughs> And so joyful and so serious. This is not a, this is not a joke. We're going to stand before the Lord on that great and terrible day. Oh, Jesus. I want to be ready. And I don't want to try to get ready tomorrow. I want to be ready today. We want to be ready, Lord. You're, you're so worth being ready for. You're so fun. You're so easy. You're so kind. You're so loving. You gave everything for me. Why wouldn't I give everything to you? Why wouldn't I give everything to you? Any questions? <laughs> Just tears. It's okay to walk away from silliness. Don't be influenced. Wow. I told Jesus today, I said, Lord, I want to be led by your spirit, live in you like my life depends on it, because I'm seeing clearly it does. To not be led by the spirit is not an option for a Christian. You're going to be led by a spirit. Right. You're going to be led by the Holy Spirit or the an evil spirit or your flesh. And your flesh and the enemy are in league. They both bring death. If you follow your flesh or somebody else's flesh, I keep hearing this to say this, if you're following your friend's flesh, if you're following some silly, unstable, flighty opinion, what are you doing? <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. I don't care if it's your best friend. I don't care if it's your spouse. I don't care if it's your mama. Stop it. <laughs> Come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You can be kind to people. You need to be kind to people. Loving. Love our enemies, right? But we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit only. The Holy Spirit, confirmed by His Word, needs to be the influence on our lives.